Hey everyone, how's it going? Doug here. Uh, I'm going to do a nice video today here about the A10 Mini Extreme, which I have here in front of me, and the Super Source uh, transition macros that I've created that have been available for quite a while now for other A10 switchers. These, the Super Source feature has been primarily reserved for Blackmagic's higher end switchers, so previously the 2ME Production Studio. 4ME Broadcast Studio in the Constellation, and with the introduction of the ATEM Mini Extreme recently, they've also brought that feature into a lower-end model as well. So for those of you who are not familiar with it, it's basically a way of doing up to four picture-in-picture -picture windows uh, to, together on screen at the same time. Now, what my scripts do is allow you to do animations with those, so it's not just uh, static, put it up on screen, look at, a, look at a layout for forever. You can actually transition between different layouts, so if you want to go from a uh, a layout that has two people on screen to one that has three people on screen or four or whatever you can do that and the software automatically figures out how to do a smooth transition from one layout to the next and so it does that with animation and if you watch the channel here much you've actually seen this in in use I've been using this pretty heavily on my channel here for about the last year and it's something that I use very heavily with my clients as well and it's something that always wows them and makes them think hey this guy knows what he's doing he knows how to put on a, a big production, a uh, high quality production, something that looks good. And you see it in, in broadcast, especially on cable news all the time, being able to do multiple layouts and being and doing animated trans transitions between those. So let me give you a couple of examples. And initially here, you're gonna be seeing me doing these transitions on my 2ME Production Studio 4K switcher. And then we're gonna get into me doing them on the A10 Mini Extreme here in a few minutes. I should mention that the, this because this is live, if you're watching this live, you can actually jump into the chat and ask questions. I'm not going to be monitoring continuously throughout the course of the, this video, but I will be checking in from time to time. So if you have questions, be sure and leave those in the chat. If you're watching this after the fact, you can leave those questions down in the comment section below the video, and I will do my best to try and answer those. Uh, since you're here, be, also be sure to subscribe to the channel. I do video production-related content around once a week and I try to do videos that are a little more technical in nature than some of the other ones that are out there and kind of give you more information about what's going on behind the scenes with a lot of the video production equipment that's out there and whatnot. And uh, also, when subscribing, be sure and click on the bell icon for notifications of new videos. Uh, I should also mention that people who are members of the channel and people who are Patreon supporters do get early access to most videos on the channel at least a day in advance, and they get access to those videos without advertising as well. So if that's something that interests you, click on the Join button down below or search for the Patreon link in the video description down below. Um, another thing that I've also recently started doing, I've been doing a lot more live streams for the people who are members and Patreon viewers. Uh, things behind the scenes of what's going on with events and me doing things in my trailer, just all sorts of things that might maybe not necessarily of interest to everybody who watches the channel, but maybe who are people who are a little more into this kind of thing. And I make those available, I say I made those videos available for uh, paying members and Patreon subscribers uh, as well. So anyway, so if, if this sort of content interests you, you may want to take a look at, at those options as well. Uh, I wanted to wait a couple minutes before I really get dig, dig into this to make sure that people have a chance to join and see everything. I'm going to answer some questions right up front that typically come a little later when I do those, these sorts of videos. So, um, so just a couple minutes about some of the videos that I'm currently working on that may be of interest to viewers here on the channel. So I've had in my possession now for about a month, uh, actually exactly a month, the a Apple Mac Mini with M1 chip, and I've been doing a lot of testing with that for different video production related workflows. So video editing and rendering and live streaming and those kinds of things. And I will be producing a video here on the channel before too long with the results of that. I spent well over 200 hours in testing on that so far. And the results, I should, I will say, are very surprising. So, yeah, be sure and stay tuned to the channel and be and subscribe if you haven't already uh, for that video. It's going to be coming in the next few weeks. Uh, it's very interesting. Also, I'm going to be doing a video here very shortly about the new intercom system that I installed in my trailer here in December, and that video is currently in the works. And a lot of interesting things there because uh, I've done some very interesting things with uh, using a traditional audio mixer, traditional digital audio mixer. Uh, for intercom, so uh, marrying two different worlds there, and I've got some really cool capabilities that I've got with that because of the way that that is set up. So again, subscribe to the channel if that's something that interests you. Okay, so 
with, with all of that, uh, hopefully people who are meaning to join have joined by now. And we can actually join in, uh, jump right in to the real content. So when I talk about my animated Superstar Smackers, let me show you guys kind of an example of what that looks like. So, so I press the button here on my little control panel. And just for information, this smaller control panel is the one that I'm using to control my 2ME Production Studio switcher. And then this bigger one here is the one I'm going to be using to control my A10 Mini Extreme here. So if you see me pressing buttons on different switchers, that helps you to understand which which equipment is doing what so so that yeah so we, what you just saw was an animated transition from me full screen to me with the overhead camera uh showing the top of my desk here i've also got similar layouts for going to uh, my computer that's here at my right and also for the output of the a10 mini extreme i can also do these four up views as well and all i have to do to transition between those is press buttons that are here on my little uh, x keys control panel and this is done using a piece of software called Adjust Macros. It's a little old now and hasn't been updated for a long time, but it absolutely does still work even with the latest version of the ATEM switchers. Works just fine with the ATEM Mini Extreme. I, I didn't find any issues at all as I've been testing it for the last 24 hours. Um, so that said, um, so you use, you use the Just Macro software along with some code that I've written, and I'm making it available for free. I'm not even charging anything for this, where I've produced... Currently, the list is currently at 109 different super source layouts, and you can add your own at will. You know, do whatever you want to the code in order to modify it. It's really not that hard to add your additional layouts. Uh, I've covered that here on this channel before, so that's something that interests you. You can go back and watch one of those previous videos. Uh, that information does still apply. Um, the software that, is, that I've written to do this, I'm gonna I'm gonna be making available for free. And <laughs> bear with me for one second. So th this is the web address where that's going to uh, actually be made available. So djp.li slash supersource4. That is not available just yet. If you're watching this live, you, that, that link doesn't do anything just yet, but it will later today. I have a few things that I need to do with the instructions to update it for the A10 Mini Extreme and make a few minute, last minute tweaks on the code. But I will be posting that later today, and that address right there at the bottom of your screen is where you're going to find that. So if this is something that interests you, go to that address, and you'll be able to download the code. And in a minute here, I'm going to show you how to install that into the Just Macro software in order to do these transitions, like you're seeing, on the ATEM Mini Extreme. All right? I didn't program a button over here to do that, so I have to turn around and use my main XP, X keys control panel behind me. Okay, so... Um, that said, for one of the big questions that I've gotten many times with this software before is, does this software require Just Macros? And the answer to that is, yes, it does. The reason for that is Just Macros is the only platform other than uh, some very high-level or very low-level complicated things. Uh, the, guy named, the guy named Ian Morris that watches the channel who produces uh, PowerShell versions of, of different scripts, including uh, my Just Macros super source macros uh, you can so you can do it you can do it through his scripts as well using powershell but just macros is really the only tool out there that provides the functionality that's required in order to have the intelligence to do these smooth transitions from one layout to another there are other packages out there that have been made available by for, by different people uh, to do super source layouts and to do transition between different super source layouts but those rely on pre-calculated can transitions that you're only allowed to transition from this one to this one or this one to this one. You can't transition from any, any layout to any other layout. So this is a little bit unique in that it allows you to do any transition you want at any point in time. And it, it automatically does the math in order to figure out how to make the transition from one to another. So that makes this a little bit unique. And I'm also, I'm not charging for mine. So a couple of the other solutions out there, they're actually charging money for it. So, so this is free. The Just Macro software, they do have paid versions, but they also have a free version. And I've always been using the paid version. Uh, sorry, I've always used the free version of Just Macros. I've never actually had to buy it in order to get access to this functionality. So the things I'm going to show you here today doesn't cost any money. It's actually totally free. So uh, the price is certainly right. And you're getting some additional functionality here that you don't get with anybody else. All right. So let's actually talk a little bit about how to configure the A10 Mini Extreme to do this. Uh, so, I mean, it has Super Source built in, but there are some things that you're going to want to do in order to make it work well with my software. So let's actually take, 
wrong button. There we go. Well, we'll take a look at some ATEM configuration things. So if I go into ATEM setup and go into here, so you're going to want to change the switching mode. Zoom in a little. To program preview, it defaults to cut bus, and you could tweak the code in order to make it work with the cut bus functionality. But it's really going to work better if you change this to program and preview, and that's a better way to go anyway because that's the way what most uh, video switchers actually happen to work the cut bus is really designed there for people who are just getting started don't want to learn how to do uh, the more traditional program preview workflow where you select your preview and then do your transition the cut bus is press the button and it automatically cuts to that source so the program preview is a more flexible way to go and it works much better with these macros than uh, it does uh, in the cut bus mode. Now also, while you're in here, you're going to want to make note of the IP address of your switcher. In my case, it's 10.1.8.195. And we're going to use that when we set up just macros a little bit later. So with that, we can go ahead and save. And that's all we really have to do in order to make the ATEM Mini Extreme compatible with the latest version of my just macros uh, software. So. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. Now, I speak of uh, talking about just macros. What, first of all, where do we get it? So, the website for that is justmacros.tv. And so you just type that into your browser. And then you scroll down a little bit and you see downloads. And you see download just macros full package. And you'll click on that. And then you'll click on the link here that comes up to download the 2.9 version of the software. It does work with older ones. I actually, I'm actually still running an older version uh, in, in my production system. Uh, but it does work well with either one. So once you've actually downloaded that and taken that zip file and opened it and placed it on your desktop, so I've got my Just Macros folder here. And if I zoom in a little bit. Uh, so I've extracted the zip file into this folder. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go to that link that I showed a little bit earlier, the, the djp.li slash supersource4. That will be a zip file as well. And you'll take the contents of that zip file, and you're going to stick those files into this macros and then globals subdirectory. So you'll, you'll find a bunch of files so like this apply SS layout, DJ, ATEM, Funk. These are files that are going to be included in that download and the files that are necessary in order to make this work. Once you copy those files into there, you can actually go ahead and launch the Just Macros software. And you can find that by going back to the main Just Macros folder that you just created and double click the Just Macros uh, Plus. And then you're going to want to click on Allow Access in order to allow that, to, that software to communicate with your ATEM switcher. All right, now the free version has these pop up reminders. So you're going to want to. Uh, dismiss those whenever those come up. We're going to see that show up a few times here today. Uh, one way to prevent that from really getting in the way when you're working is to stick the Just Macro software on a second desktop on your computer. And if you haven't ever, if you're not familiar with this, if you press the Windows key and then Tab, that brings up this screen right here where you can actually create different desktops. So I've got desktop one, desktop two, desktop three. And when I'm working, I normally stick my Just Macro software on desktop two, and then I do most of my work on desktop one. And that way those pop-ups, even though they are still occurring, they're happening on desktop two and don't get in the way, and I never see them. So uh, you might want to do the same thing. All right, so today we're working on desktop one, so that's where I'm going to be most of the time. With, with those scripts actually installed, you'll, you'll find those, again, under the globals, and then you see here's like the a DJ ATEM funk. Uh, dot it doesn't show the extensions here, but it's a .dot uh, Lua macros extension. So with those installed, we can actually kind of get started a little bit. And I'm going to be demonstrating today using the X keys controllers here. So uh, for pur purposes of this demo, I'm going to be using my 80 key one that I've got here. Um, but I'm going to be doing configuring the buttons on here to, to do. To do these layouts and do these transitions and so that's what we're going to be working on but before we get into that we actually need to set up the just macro software to talk to our switcher and, and if we go into yeah uh, make this a little bit sorry a little bit bigger it's mixing up which button is which here so so we go over to the devices tab mine already has my switcher in here but you say click add atem 
and I've already added one. You're only allowed one in the free version, but it will pop up and ask you for the IP address that we just got out of the ATEM setup software, and then you can give it a name if you want. So the name, name isn't really very meaningful. It's just there for, for you, for your reference. It doesn't actually uh, have anything to do with the way that it works within the software. And once you've done that, Just Macro should actually just start talking to your ATEM switcher automatically. And there's a, a, a lot of functionality that's there that this enables. Uh, and most of it is designed to work with these X keys controllers, but that's not the only way to go. If there's if there's time at the end, I'll show how to in your, incorporate this into a BitFocus companion with Stream Deck workflow. But I I don't know if I'm going to have time to do that today. I do have instructions on how to do that within the download. So when you download that uh, SuperSource 4 file, there's a PDF file in there that has instructions on how to set all this up, and there is uh, a couple pages in there that show how to enable this to work with BitFocus companion. Uh, and, not, and not require the X keys controllers. So if that's something that interests you, there are instructions on how to do that. That is a supported workflow, uh, and it does, does work reasonably well. So anyway, all right, so we've got our ATEM talking, uh, ATEM Mini Extreme talking to Just Macros at this point. And at this point, we're going to actually want to set up some, some keys on our X keys controller. I go, there we go. Set up some keys on our X keys controller to to do the ATEM uh, super source macro transitions. All right, so I'm gonna sh let me show you guys a little bit of how this works. Before I do that, I actually want to reconfigure the way that I have my ATEM Mini Extreme set up. So I'm um, gonna open the ATEM software control, click on the little gear icon down there in the bottom, and then I'm gonna go over to Multi View. Now, as you, can, as you guys can see on the lower left portion of your screen there, I've got this setup in the default, I'm, we're showing the multi-view on, on the output of the ATEM Mini Extreme, and I've got this set up to show the default layout. For this, to, for this whole process to work really well, you're really going to want to be able to see the preview window that's part of the switcher. And if you, if you want to set up your, one of your HDMI outputs to show preview, that's great, but it probably makes more sense in most situations to use the multi-view and then reconfigure that to show the preview as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, so I'm going to click on the upper left corner, upper left quadrant, and and then I'm going to set that to preview. I, actually, I already set the preview. And then I'm going to reconfigure my cameras down here so I can actually see those. So camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four. I only have two inputs hooked up today, but then I've got I've got I've got super source set in the lower left, and then I've got the remaining th status, the remaining three boxes set to audio status, recording status, and streaming status. And obviously. Reconfigure this to your own needs, whatever's going to work well for you. Uh, but yeah, but you're probably going to want, you're really, really going to want to have a preview window available because some of the stuff that this, these macros do, you have to be able to see the preview in order for it to work. So you pr will probably want to do that. Anyway, uh, it's also nice to have the super source window there in the lower left corner as well so that you can see exactly what the super source is doing at any given point in time so you know when it's safe to transition to it. If it make sure that it has the layout that you're expecting it to. All right, All right. so I'm going to demonstrate a couple of buttons that I have configured on my X keys controller here. So the first button uh, is a button to, to select the particular layout that you want. So as I press, ah, I forgot to do one thing. So I'm going to come in here. To go back into super source. I'm going to go to down here. I forgot to mention that you need to set up your sources to go into your super source. All right, so uh, in the, the ATEM software control, in the under palettes, super source, presets, we're going to want to set some video sources to our uh, super source boxes. So box one, I'm going to set to camera one. And then box two, I'm going to set. Well, we need, we need to select the reel. So box two, I'm going to set to camera two, box three to color one, and then box four, I'm going to set to color bars so you can actually see that there's, there's different sources. Actually, I'm going to change box three so it's not just white. We'll go to color two. There we go. All right, so if you look at the super source window, and it's available in, in the lower left corner, also showing on preview, you can see that I have those four super sources set up. So my camera, uh, the ATEM software on this computer, the orange color source, and then uh, color bars. And so uh, you'll be able to tell that uh, 
those are the four sources and as, as I navigate through the different super source layouts you'll be able to see how those how those are going so all right so back to back to my software so if I press the super source layout button you can see that it's cycling through the layouts that I've predefined and just one by one so I've got 109 different layouts in the version of the software that I'm going to be releasing today I add new ones all the time for different events that we're doing and so you'll you'll, you'll find like some the ones we're looking at here are very similar to uh, I'm actually see that a little more closely there we go uh, so these are similar to the ones that I'm actually using on my main switcher right now so you can see how those how those are are generated so again anyway, I've got a ton of them 109 109 different available ones uh, and feel free to add your own or customize at will uh, like uh, these are those that I just went through two up views and I've got some these are these particular ones here are designed for using there we go with uh, zoom so they crop off the top and bottom of the screen so you're not seeing any of the the on-screen controls so anyway I've got it I've got a bunch of them there's a whole bunch of them here and what we're what I'm doing here is I'm going through the different layouts I'm this allows me to choose which layouts that I want to use as part of my program so say I've got one like here like for example I want I like this one I want to be able to use it later I've got this code set up so that I can save this layout on a different button on my controller and in order to do that I hold down the shift key and then press one of these five layout buttons or I've reconfigured this panel t for today to use my what I would normally use as the second ME on my main switcher I've got those set up as layout buttons as well so I press hold down shift and press one of the buttons in this case I'm going to do layout one so shift layout one and that stores that layout in that button um, and then go to another layout so we'll go to this layout and I'm going to store that in layout two with the shift key and advance a few more that those are full screen layouts there we go let's yeah and then if I hold down shift and press my layout selector button that goes backwards so forward and then shift goes backwards so yeah we'll, we'll choose this one as this is a is the one for layout two so shift layout two and then that's stored and then when I want to use those I actually just press the button so there it is so I press layout one and it does the animation from the full screen to to that layout so I press the button there we go and I've got other ones here as well so these ones that I chose earlier before I started this video so you can see I'm freely freely able to select and rotate between any of these transitions in any order that I want at any time it gives you a lot of flexibility you know it allows you to dynamically uh, adjust what's going on um, with uh, your different video sources all right so now I should mention that when the super source is live like it currently is if you see you can see the super source layout in the program window there you're not able to view what's going on with your super source transition and what, what with your when you're selecting different super source transitions so as I press my layout button it's blinking the window but and it is selecting a different source but you can't see it because the super source is already in use and you only have one on your switcher so that's why you, you probably want to use these layout preset buttons that, that I've that I've been demonstrating here because that allows you to with a single press transition between any of the layouts that you, you know you want to use all right okay uh, let's do a quick check in with the chat here and see if anybody is asking any questions okay all right so just very quickly how are my streaming in 4k I'm using OBS uh, my, my 2ME my 2ME shoots 4K, so I'm shooting in 4K. Camera's 4K. I have converters to convert the video between 4K and 1080, uh, coming, going in and out of the mini extreme. Video is going into the computer that's behind me on a DeckLink card, and I'm using OBS to do the encoding and for it, do the upload in 4K. So very briefly, yeah. All right. So um, someone asked me earlier if I bought this A10 mini extreme. Yes, I did. Uh, I paid for this. Um, it came yesterday. All right. Um, let's see. 
Can't figure out how to use chroma key output as a fill source in the super source box. Uh, you can't use a chroma key on super source unless you have um, a multiple ME switcher and you do the chroma on the second, third, or fourth ME and then have set that ME program as one of the sources for your super source. So the ATEM Mini Extreme is not going to be able to do that. All right, uh, let's see. Which control panels am I using? These are the X keys, XK80 and XK24. I also have XKE128 behind me. And I'd buy a bigger one if they made it. Like it's, it's nice to have so many, so many buttons. So, uh, Alvin asking, is any of this possible on a Mac? Uh, not natively. You might be able to do something using one of the emulation, like Wine, Darwine, Crossover, one of those tools. But Just Macros is not available natively for the Mac. All right. So um, have a tutorial on how to install and run the software. I'm kind of working on that here in the video. There are full instructions in the download uh, for how to install my stuff. I'm not, I don't go into detail on how to install, to install Just Macros, but I do have instructions on how to install my scripts into Just Macros. All right, okay, cool. All right, so let's, now I demonstrated how some of these buttons, some of the buttons work. We can actually, I can actually show you how we can figure these. All right, so we go over to the X keys panel, and I'm going to create a new layout here. So basically starting from scratch. So even though I've got all this pre-configured and ready to go, um, uh, there we go. We'll go with that layout. There we go. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to start with an entirely new layout, so you guys can see exactly how this is done from start to end. So when we come into Just Macros, it automatically detects the uh, X keys control panels, and at this point we just need to configure the different buttons to do the things that we want to do. All right, so just briefly, let me do a little bit of housekeeping here. I need to make some changes to disable my current layout. So I'm going to change this unit identifier 998 on there. So just ignore what I'm doing for the moment. All I'm doing is disabling what I've already done so that I can redo it for purposes of this video. All right, so I'll go ahead and click on update there. All right, now I see the XK, XK80 in here. And then down in this lower left pane, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what, better what's going on. All right, so add profile for, you choose the X keys model that you have. In my case, it's an 80, so I'm going to use XK60 slash 80. That creates a brand new profile, uh, and that's profile 3. Now, in order to connect it to my particular control panel, because the software can talk to multiple panels, it's very regular for me to have all three of my panels connected at the same time, and each one is configured independently. But in order to find... In order to connect that, we need to know the unit ID. So we'll come back up here, click on the unit itself, and then it shows the unit identifier. Right now I've got mine set to six. So this panel that I've got here in front of me is ID six, and I need to connect my profile to that. So I'm gonna click on the profile here, and then I'm gonna change the unit identifier in here to 006, and then click on update. That will connect the button layout that I'm about to make with this X keys panel that I have here in front of me, okay? All right, so and the other thing you're gonna notice here is that the, the numbering on the buttons is a little bit weird, and this takes some getting used to. It doesn't start with one in the upper left corner and then go to two, three, four to the right. It starts in the upper right corner and then goes down and then, then from right to left. So it's very, very weird in how it works. It makes it a little bit hard for you to wrap your head around how you number the buttons and, and whatnot, but we'll get through it. All right, so uh, as you can see from overhead, um, I've got this fourth row here is my buttons that I'm going to be using. So that's buttons 76, 68, 60, 52, and so forth. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that a little better. There we go. So I'm gonna, that's fourth row. And the buttons that I'm going to be using for the super source layout and the button to apply those layouts are going to be buttons 51 and 43. So we'll start by doing those first. So we want to, want to configure button 51. So remember that this whole process is a little awkward and I apologize for that. That's just the way that Just Macros works. So anyway, so if you ever get, if you ever get lost and don't know what button number you need, come back up here in the upper left, click on your panel in the list, and it will bring up this, this kind of cheat sheet there. But once we go to actually configure the buttons, then we have to go back to the profile that we created earlier. So now I'm going to uh, configure button 51. So I'm going to click on profile 3, and then scroll down here in this list to button 53. 
All right. From there, I'm going to want to choose. Well, I need. I'm going to grab. I'm going to grab the code that I need to stick in there first. So, I take that back. We're doing the apply SS layout, so we don't need to. We don't need to grab any code. So I'm going to say set button type. I'm going to, then I'm going to choose macro. And then click OK. And then I want to give this a label so that we can see what it is later. So I'm going to say SS layout cycle. All right. And then the macro name here is SS layout cycle. So I'll choose that from the list and then press OK. And at that point, that button should actually start working. So let me make sure that I take the super source off screen and then oh I did 51 53 I need 50 I need 51 let me try that again gotta love doing live right so SS layout cycle and then we're gonna choose that script from the list and remember we downloaded and installed these earlier so that's why these scripts are available on this list so we'll click on OK all right there we go yeah, so there we go. As I'm pressing the button, you can see it cycling through the different layouts. Now, what we're going to want to do next, I'm going to want to assign the button next to it and go back to our thing here. And you know, button 43 is the one that we want to use to apply that particular layout. So I'm going to go back to profile 3, select button 43. Oh, sorry, is that right? It's going to be 8 more less than this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 45, is that right? Double check that. 43. So, okay, 51 and 43. All right. So 43. The one we're going to want to set. Yeah, cause, yeah, 53 is the wrong one. Let me go ahead and reset that, clear that, so it doesn't screw me up again. 43, set button type, macro. Okay. And then we're going to say apply SS layout. And then we're going to choose the apply SS layout macro from the list of available ones. There, so I've got my buttons to cycle between, and then I've got my button to actually apply the layout. So, yeah, so I can cycle to choose a layout and then apply that particular layout. Okay, all right, so uh, next thing. Well, but before I go too far, let me actually show you guys how to configure your video sources on these buttons as well. Because that's something that uh, some people tend to have trouble figuring out. So I'm going to want to configure this bottom row, so buttons 80, 72, 64, and, and so forth, as my video source buttons. So that's video ca camera 1, video uh, camera 2, camera 3, camera 4, and so forth. The way we do that, we go back into profile 3, and I'm going to scroll all the way down to button 80, click on that. Say set button type, and then this is going to be ATEM. Let's see, ATEM preset source. So we're changing which source is on the preview. So I'll click on OK there. And I'm going to call this 111 because I'm going to have this actually do two different sources. Mini Extreme is the switcher we want, and that's on ME1. Source number is going to be camera 1, and then the shifted source number is going to be camera. Well, we don't have an 11 on, on this. Let me close this real quick. We don't have an 11 on here, so I'm gonna, not going to bother with that. But on my other switcher, I do have an 11, so I would set this up as camera 11 on the shifted. All right, so that's for that one. And then I can do 72, set button type, A10 preset source. Call this 2, source number. It's a little tedious to go through this, but you only really have to do it one time. And then next one after that is going to be 64. Set button type, A10 preset source. OK. This is 3. Choose camera 3. And then I'll do 4 and then I'll call it done. If you remember that you advance by 8, or actually decrease by 8, uh, in order to go to the next button to the right, it makes this a little bit easier. So preset source, OK. And this is going to be. I'm on four now, I think, right? So four, and then camera four. Okay, all right. And then with, th with that, I'm able to select sources one, two, three, four on the buttons here on my panel. All right, the other button we're going to want to configure before we get too far is a shift button. In my case, that's on the upper right. So that's going to be, <clears throat> click on this, 
button one. All right, so if we go back into profile three, scroll all the way to the top to button one. I'm going to say set button type, and then where is it? It's a uh, ATEM shift right there. All right, so yeah, so and we'll call that shift. So we're going to actually use that a fair amount here with what we're doing. All right, so there we go. So now I have button one configured as a shift. So let me take, let me do one other as, as well. So button eight, I'm going to set that up as uh, ATEM cut. So this will be the cut transition. So that will I be able to do, do the train. No, it's not cute, cut, there we go. So there we go. So that allows me to, to cut between sources. All right, now, so if I do my layout cycle, pressing it without shift goes to the next layout, and then pressing with shift goes to the previous layout, so it goes backwards. So that makes it easier to navigate. With the, pre with the preset buttons we're about to create, the shift button stores the current layout in that button, and then when you press the button without the shift, that's when it does the recall. So it makes it really handy. So uh, in order to do the preset buttons, we do have to actually have to copy copy them code. So if I come over to macros, and then I choose SS layout, uh, which one is it? SS layout uh, I, don't, I don't have it in there. So let me actually grab the code. I know I have it. I have the code here in Notepad++. There we go. So this is one. I'll make sure that the download includes this. But the function that we want to call here is SS uh, recall SS layout or set recall SS layout. So we'll remember that. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this to my clipboard, and then come over to and doesn't want to hide. There we go. Okay. All right, so I'm going to program some buttons here for different layouts, to store different layouts. And as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be button 76, 68, and so forth, to store different layouts. So I'll come over to Profile 3, scroll down to 76, and then I'm going to say Set and Button Type. And this is where we choose Standard instead of Macro. And then our caption on this is going to be Layout 1. And then we're going to paste in that code that I just grabbed. Again, you'll be able to get it from uh, download. Uh, and then I'm going to make sure that this number here re reflects the layout number that I want. So layout one, make sure that the script here, let me zoom in there, uh, show that it actually is a one. So and click OK. And then I'm going to advance eight positions up. I think I said 76 and I just did 78. All right. Let me uh, fix that real quick. Reset button. OK, 76. Set button type standard, OK, caption layout 1, unbutton down, we'll paste that in, so that becomes layout 1, OK, and then I'll move up 8 slots, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then set button type standard, OK, layout 2, and we'll paste that in there, and then I'm going to change the number in that function call to 2, then we'll go up 8. Eight. Okay, position 60, set button type, standard. You get the idea. So I'll, I'll do I'll do like four of them here. So change the SS layout recall parameter to three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, set button type, standard, okay. Layout four, paste, change that number to four, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 44, yeah, standard, okay, you get the point. So this is layout 5, unbutton down, set, set recall SS layout 5, and then hit OK. All right, so now that I've got those buttons pressed, or is it pr programmed, I can cycle through my different layouts using the SS layout cycle script that we configured earlier, and then when I find one I like, hold down the shift key and then press my layout button that I just now programmed and that stores that layout in that button. So advance a few more, shift, store, advance a few more, shift, 
store and now for me to recall those layouts I just press those buttons so so yeah um, that's really the gist of it so there are other things that this the script can do as well but that's really the heart of it so with the button to cycle between different layouts and the button to apply a different layout a shift button in order to allow you to reverse the direction as you're cycling and then setting buttons to set and recall different preset layouts uh, as well so button by itself to recall and then hold down shift with that button in order to store a particular preset in there as well so before I go any farther check the chat room see if anybody has any questions all right okay You seen John's SuperSource program? I, I briefly, yeah, I, I briefly looked at it. Uh, he's he's he, what he's doing is he's uh, making it easy to to create the layouts. He's not really doing anything with the animation. So you could you could use his in con conjunction with mine. Um, they're not they're not doing the same thing. So all right. Uh, let's see Stream Deck compatibility. Um, I, I mentioned this earlier. So. Just Macros itself does not communicate with a Stream Deck. If you want to use a Stream Deck with this, you can set up Companion, BitFocus Companion, to send commands over to this Just Macros software. So you can do it. Uh, it's not quite as simple as just using X keys natively, but it, it can be done. Uh, it's, a, there's a, it's a little bit more tedious to set it up and get it working, but it absolutely can be done. I've tested it. I, I made written code specifically to do that, and there are full instructions on how to do that or will be full instructions on how to do that in the download that's going to be made available later today. So, all right. Uh, so, someone asking, can you actually define button colors on the X keys controller? So, these are actually just paper labels. So, the buttons are transparent, and I just use the color laser printer to print out the labels that are going in here. So, it's not an LCD screen like you find on the Stream Deck. Uh, they're just paper labels, and I use I actually use a fairly thin paper so that the light actually shows through. You can't see it on camera with all these bright lights everywhere. But the lights actually do show through on the buttons here, so I can see in the dark. So, All right, uh, John, you can always rotate the X keys 90 degrees to the left to make the numbering easier. It makes it a little bit easier, but it doesn't, doesn't really solve the problem because the numbering still goes right to left, or top to bottom, right to left, which is very different than the way that we tend to think. So, uh, Link to Super Source does not work. Yes, I, I have not posted the files yet. I still need to do some last-minute tweaking. I've only had 24 hours to test and make a few code changes in order to make this so that this stuff work with the ATEM Mini Extreme. There weren't a lot of changes that I had to make, but I did have to make a handful. Uh, the version of the SuperSource macros that I've posted here on my channel before does not work natively with the ATEM Mini Extreme. The versions that I've been posting on Discord, which by the way, if you want to continue to receive updates for this stuff and you want to get help and or do feature requests for that kind of thing. Actually, you want to join us over on Discord, so djp.li slash Discord, in order to, to find that uh, discussion going on. Uh, that's where I'm posting beta versions. So as I add new features, which I do pretty regularly, uh, that's where those updates are going to go. So I'm going to leave the version that I'm posting and linking to here in this video the same, unless there's a major bug that I need to fix. So you're not going to, I'm not going to be adding new features to the version that's going to be in that, in that DJP li slash super source for download if you want beta versions with new features new layouts etc get those, get those over on the discord server that's where i'm that's where i've been posting those so but anyway i have not posted that link just yet it will be live later today so just be a little bit patient I, the software will be available today just it's not available just yet I, i've had a few minor changes that i've had to make and i also need to update the documentation a little bit as well so um yeah so yes, yeah, as Spencer said, join the Discord. Uh, that's where, that's where I'm, I'm posting updates. That's where we're we're doing. Uh, that's where we're, that's where we go to help for, to get help in order to configure this. And so anyway, um, Paul asking, can you set up multiple buttons at the same time? So like set up buttons one through nine concurrently. No, uh, it is one button at a time, unfortunately. But like I said, 
you only have to do it one time, so it's, it's only painful just once. You don't need to continually do this over and over and over again every time you launch the software. Once you set up a button, it, that configuration stays forever. So, yeah. All right. Uh, okay. All right. So, I, looks like all the questions we've got going on now. All right. So, with that, I'm going to actually show you guys how to add your own layout. And I, I'm going to do this um, using both the ATEM software and the Just Macros code. Make it a little bit easier. So, all right. So, with I'm going to go ahead and minimize this, and I'm going to bring up the ATEM software control. And we're going to create another layout um, here in the ATEM software. So I'm going to start with their basic one, which is just a 2x2, two two, four-source layout. Um, you can see that there on the lower left portion of your screen. And we'll, we'll do a custom one. So. In order to do this, I'm going to do the user interface so we can actually see the changes live. Uh, I want to make sure you guys understand how the how the numbers that we're working with here actually work, because once you understand that, you can actually do layout creation from within code. I've done of those 109, I've done like 105 of them just in code without having to utilize the ATEM software in order to come up with the values that we're going to be using. But that said, all right, so um, see over here, let me, scroll, let me zoom in a little bit. So that we're setting up, what we're setting up here is the position and size and cropping, actually, of each one of the different boxes that's on screen. So right now, box one, and the one that's got my video is in the upper left. The source for that is camera one, which is where I have the camera input connected on here. But let's say we want to have a layout that looks similar but has smaller black borders around it. We want to fill most of the screen. So we do what we're going to do here is we're going to be mostly tweaking the values here in this box control section. So we, what we do is we specify an X and a Y position. Now let me explain how this numbering system actually works. So the numbering system doesn't matter what resolution your switcher is running, it's, it's always the same. So the center of the screen is 0, 0. The far left edge of the screen, X is minus 16, and if you're centered top to bottom, your Y is 0. So Y goes from nine, minus 9 at the bottom of the screen to 9 at the top of the screen. X goes from minus 16 at the left of the side of the screen to 16 on the right hand screen. For what you're looking at, it's backwards. So for, for you, yeah, minus 16 uh, for the left side, and then positive 16 on the right, and then again, 0, 0 in the middle. So if you want to have a, a box positioned, you <laughs> have to do this right so it looks right for you, at half, or like one quarter of the width of the screen, you're going to want to be halfway between the middle and the left edge. So halfway between 0 and minus 16 is minus 8. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in to the X position. We're saying minus 8 on the X position. And then for Y, we, again, we want to do the same thing. Uh, between 0 and 9, Halfway between that is 4.5, all right? So that moved that window uh, a little bit to the left and a little bit, a little bit upward. And we're going to want to adjust the size here. And then the, the size very, very size value uh, is between 0 and 1. 0 is, well, it's actually 0 0.07 is the smallest size it can do, all the way up to 1, which is full screen. So if I change this to 1, you're going you're gonna to see that that window is full size. It takes up the, it would take up the full size of the screen. But I'm going to change it to 0 0.5. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit for a little bit smaller. So 0 0.45. So we want to leave some, some border between. All right. So does that make sense? So we've gone exactly halfway between center and the left-hand edge and center and the top edge. So that puts us at minus, uh, minus eight and plus, because it goes minus to plus on the, on the, on the Y. And we're going to go plus 4.5 and then size 0 0.45. And then I'm going to do the same, same sort of thing on the other one. So I'm going to go to box 2. And that's the one that's currently in the upper right. I'm change the X here to 8. And I'm going to change the Y to 4.5. And then change the size to 0 0.45. That's like 45% of full size if you want to think of it that way. Then we'll go to box 3. Again, minus 8 because we want it halfway between the center and the left edge. And then Y, we're going downward, so we want a minus number, minus 4.5. And then the size, we're going to do 0.45. And then we'll do box 4 and do the same thing. So X is 8, Y minus 4.5, and then size 0 
All right, so there we go. So that layout that we're looking at there is the one that we're going to be putting in here. It's one I wouldn't really use, but for purposes of demonstration, that's what we're going to do. So now that we've actually come up with the numbers that we want, and by the way, you, you can use the... Uh, you can use the mouse here, so for example, if I, uh, let me adjust box one, see, it's very clear what's going on. If you hover over the X thing and move your mouse, you can do it with your mouse. You don't have to type in the values, but uh, you, get, you will lose a little fine grain control if you do that, but it's good for rough positioning. All right, so we know the numbers that we want to use. So camera, camera one is minus eight, four, and 4.5, a size of 0.45. Camera two, minus eight, Camera two, oh, sorry, that changes. Box two is what we want. Positive eight, positive 4.5. Box three, minus eight, minus 4.5. Box four, positive eight, minus 4.5. And then the size is 0.45 for all of these. Now, what, we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the Adjust Macros application, and we're gonna create a new layout. So we go over to the Macros page, and the layouts themselves are stored in this DJ ATEM Funk file uh, and you'll see here in a minute it's actually pretty easy to, to do these once once you understand the numbering system we're going to add one additional layout uh, there's a variable here at the top that says num layout and we're going to need to change that in order to accommodate the new layout that we want so right now it's 109 we're going to change it to 110 i can type that right there we go so that tells the script that there are 110 layouts that we need to worry about and then from there scroll down there is this set super source layout function and this is where you actually find all the different layouts and they're numbered starting at zero so if we're we're doing the 110th layout that actually means it's layout number 109 now i've got these in numerical order they doesn't have to be but it certainly does make it easier to find things i'm going to scroll down a little bit and we're going to come down to where the bottom where the last layout is defined so right now, the current, la the current last one should be 108. That, there we go. So we're going to be adding one for 109. And in order to make this a little bit easier, I'm just going to copy-paste the existing one that's there so I don't have to retype everything. But then I'm going to go ahead and paste. And then so we'll say else if layout equals 109. And then we're going to call this one. So the layout name is actually the the name that gets displayed in the log on the bottom of the screen. So if you're monitoring that, you can see which layout you have. Four up 45% size. All right, from here, we're, we're gonna call this set box function with those values that we did a minute ago. So first, first number here in this list is the box number. So one, two, three, or four. The second, box, uh, second number here is the size, so 0 0.45. Next one here is the X position. So on box one, we are at minus eight. And then the next one is the Y position. That was 4.5. And then these, the next four are crop, cropping factors. And we don't want to do any cropping, so I'm going to set all those to zero. So it's zero, 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 zero. And then this true in here at the end, that tells it to omit the border on this particular layout. So I haven't really talked about borders much, but SuperSource does have the option of putting borders around all the different boxes. And I'm going to set this to false because like basically we want, we want to say we do want the borders for this one. All right, so that sets up box number one. And then I'm going to repeat the same thing for box number two. Again, if you need to refer to the values in ATEM software control, you can certainly alt-tab back and forth between those, make it easy to recall those. But off the top of my head, I, I remember that box two uh, X value was 8, the Y value was 4.5, and then all four cropping values are 0, and then we don't want to remove the border. By the way, the border is a global function, global a thing. You can't have some boxes with a border and some boxes without. All right, so, and then I'm going to just paste in two more for boxes 3 and 4. 3 and 4. Uh, 0 0.45 is what we want. Okay, so if on box 3, that's lower left, so x is minus, y is minus, because it's on the lower half, and then the rest remains the same. And then box 4, it's on the right, so x is positive, it's on the bottom, so y is negative. And clear out, get rid of these pop-ups, there we go. So there we go, that actually will set, set, that, set up that layout. And as I cycle through the different layouts that I have in the system, that will uh, show up um, 
in, in as we cycle through. So it will be the last one uh, that we actually have um, as part of that cycle. So if you wanted that additional one, so it's basically the same process. And if you don't need a box, like say for example, you only need a three box layout, you just omit that layout number. You don't do it. You don't call set box. You don't call the set box function for that box. So it assumes if you don't call set box that you don't want that box on screen there. So. Uh, in terms of the cropping factors, let me very quickly demonstrate how those work um, as well. So you see down here, there is, for any of these boxes, we'll go back to box one. And a little box here, you can tick and don't tell it that you want to do cropping. Again, these values are based on that whole 16, minus 16 to positive 16 system. So if we want to crop, say, half of the left, half of 16 is 8. So we say... Eight, and then if you look at the video window there in the upper left, it has removed half of the left. And if we want to do the same thing for the right, we put in an eight, and there we go. It crops off the right half. So we basically have a window that's half the size that it was originally because we've cropped off half of the left and half, the, half of the right. So anyway, so that's how the cropping factor works. If you don't want any cropping, you just put zeros in for those parameters. Okay. All right, let's check in with the chat room and see if there are any additional questions. Does Just Macros work with the macro buttons on the ATEM switcher, or do you have to use the X keys controller? Uh, it does not. Just Macros does not, uh, is, cannot be called by the, by the ATEM uh, software. So if you want to do any, any sort of macros from within Just Macros, you have to write those scripts in the Just Macros application. Um, you can call ATEM macros. No, actually, I take that back. You cannot call ATEM macros from within Just Macros. I thought you could, but I looked into it, and it turns out you can't. Um, so anyway, so anything you want to do macro-wise, you're going to want to do within Just Macros. Now, now, Just Macros actually does have a feature for recording a series of steps. So if you want to perform a, uh, perform a macro-like thing and you don't want to learn how to code, you can go in there and just basically say record. Do the things that you need to do, and then stop, and it will actually create create those scripts for you. So you don't have to understand programming in order to actually make it work for you. So, all right, uh, okay. So Sam asking, does the position get the coordinates from the center of the source? It's from the center of the screen. So uh, at zero zero is always the center of the screen, no matter what. Minus sixteen, <laughs> minus sixteen zero is always to the left. Sixteen zero is always the right. 0, 9 is always the top, 0 minus 9 is always the bottom. Uh, so do your calculations relative to that. So, yep. Jose, is there a way to add more than four, just four boxes? The answer to that is no, because that's the limitation of the ATAM switchers. The one exception to that is the Constellation, which can do up to eight sources in... It's, it's a little bit weird, but it, the, eight, the Constellation has two super sources, and you can combine those into one super source that has eight. It's a little weird, and my code doesn't really support that, but but you can. So the, the switcher itself actually can. The, the constellation and the constellation only can do more than four boxes on screen at a time. Now, with that said, uh, A10 Mini Extreme has, in addition to having super source, it also has two DVE, which are digital video effects units. And you could use those to do two additional ones. Um, I had gone down the path of making my code use the DVEs that you have available on your switcher as additional boxes. What I found, though, was that there's some sort of bug somewhere in the system where it stops working after you've done one or two transitions. And so even though the code's still in there, I wouldn't recommend trying it. So, you, I mean, you could do set box 5, and it tries to use... Uh, DVE one on upstream key one in order to add a fifth box, but I found that it was just too buggy and it, is, it isn't worth worth doing. So, short answer is no, not really. You can't really do more than four, uh, just because that's a limitation of the of the of the switcher itself. Uh, you're not unlimited like you would be in something like OBS in terms of how many different video overlays you can do. There are limitations within the hardware, but I mean to be able to get a four DVE plus two additional DVEs in a switcher for a thousand dollars is just mind blowing. <laughs> if anybody who's been in video for a long time know that DVEs have traditionally been super expensive and like even 
Aside from the Super Source, the, the Black Magic uh, switchers have traditionally only had one DVE. So the fact that they've added two in the ATEM Mini Extreme is actually kind of kind of mind blowing. It's like, wow, what are they doing here? Because like my four thousand dollar two ME production studio only ha it has the Super Source, but it only has one additional DVE on top of that. And this one, a thousand dollar switcher, has more. It's like, what are they doing? It's kind of crazy. So anyway, um, so yeah. Bottom line is. With the Super Source, you get four DVEs. They're not full DVEs, but you get four DVEs that you can use for doing picture-in-picture -picture windows. And that's... Honestly, if you need to do more than four, you probably need to reconsider the way you're doing the layouts for your video anyway. Because you do try and do more than four on screen at a time. Things are getting too busy. Uh, so even though there are switchers out there that can do more than four, you, you traditionally don't find that people actually do do more than four. Because it just uh, adds a lot of clutter on screen and adds too much, just too much going on visually. And even four can be a little bit overwhelming. So, if you guys have been on Zoom calls and you have 16 people or 25 people on screen at the same time, you can't watch them all. It's just not possible. So, having four, limiting, limiting yourself to four on screen is probably better than trying to squeeze more uh, on here as well. So, alright. Um, okay, so... Um, I guess I could roll into how to do the BitFocus Companion integration. I don't have Companion uh, installed on my computer, but if you guys don't mind being a little bit patient, I can I can actually do that on here. I did I did bring one of my stream decks out, um, so so we can we can go through that. I hadn't really planned on doing this, so I'm not fully set up for it. But uh, that said, I was able to finish in an hour, so I finished the main portion of the video in an hour, so um, we can actually take some time to get BitFocus Companion talking to Just Macros in order to do these transitions and whatnot. Okay, so in order to do this, I'm actually going to need to install Companions. I don't have that on here yet. Alright, so while I'm doing that, you guys can feel free to leave questions in the chat, and uh, I will check in from time to time to see what you guys are asking. So, bit, bit focus companion. Now, I should probably note that even though a lot of people have had really good luck with bit focus companion, I have stopped using it. Um, it caused my ATEM switcher to crash in the middle of a show a few weeks ago. Um, I was doing a live stream. Let me switch away. Um, I was doing a live stream um, for a, a client, and my switcher just died right in the middle. Uh, it was still passing video, but it was not allowing me to switch sources, um, and nothing was was uh, responding, like not even the front panel on the de on the device. And I talked to the ATEM, one of the ATEM engineers that designed the system, and he said, yeah, that basically what happened is it's uh, third-party software that caused the software inside of inside of the uh, ATEM to crash. And the only thing that I had added um, was BitFocus Companion. And I know a lot of people have had great luck with it, but I'm probably pushing it a little bit harder than most. I've got like 15 devices that I'm talking to with it. Um, but, like I say, I have since, even though I had spent a lot of time configuring, I have since removed Companion from my workflow. Uh, I, I, I just can't afford to have my switcher crashing in the middle of the show. So, all right, so BitFocus uh, website does require you to log in in order to get access to the software. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just making sure I'm just logging in. Um, okay, all right. So, you guys see what's going on here. All right, so I'm going to download for Windows. All right, so it's downloading. It's being really slow. I've got an amazingly fast internet connection here. It shouldn't be taking very long, but, but it is. <laughs> there we go, it's speeding up. All right, so while that's going... Check in on the chat. <laughs> documentation that Doug's putting you got later will include setup companion. Yes, yeah. So the document 
the, the version that's on Discord right now actually has those instructions, so I just need to do a small, small, few small tweaks to the version I'm going to release today. So, so com yeah, so setting up for Companion. Now, let me make this clear once again. Uh, even though I'm going to be demonstrating how to do this in Companion, you still have to have the Just Macro software installed. Companion does not have the capabilities necessary in order to make these things work natively within there. So, you know, Companion, it's, it's very simple. It's, it's, it's a macros application. It's kind of funny, it's just macros is a programming application, but Companion is actually just, um, just macros capability. But, uh, so anyway, so yeah, so you do, have still stuff, you do still have to have the just macros software installed and running. You don't have to have the X keys controller though. That is optional. It just, the just macro software is what provides that programming language that is needed in order to make these animations actually take place. Um, yeah, it's just not something Com Companion or any of the other tools that I've out there are capable of doing. You know, there's more going on to make these things happen than, than Companion itself can do. So anyway, that's, that's why it's in just macros and I haven't done a Companion version because Companion just can't. It's just not capable. Alrighty, so... Going to get a 2ME for work. Should I get a Stream Deck to get started with macros? Uh, what, weigh the pros and cons. Um, stream Decks are cool, but you know, like this one, the standard one, it's only 15 buttons. I've got 80 on this. Yeah. I've got 80 on X keys controller, and I've got 128 behind me. Even the small one, which is less than the Stream Deck, is, is 24. Uh, so you can get, and yes, you can navigate through different pages on the Stream Deck, which you can't do on these. But if you always want quick access to certain functions, uh, you may find that X keys is a better way to go. So it just, it just depends on your workflow. I prefer the X keys layouts because I always want to have one button do one function. I don't want to have to worry about what page I'm looking at. And the additional functionality that you get with just macros that you don't get with Companion you just got to decide what's going to work for you. So some people, Stream Deck and Companion works great. For me, I need the additional functionality of just macros and the X keys controller. And having found out recently that Companion can cause your ATEM soft switcher, switcher to crash, I'm removing Companion from my workflow just because I cannot have my switcher crashing in the middle of event, an event. So, okay, let's see if the download is finished. Right, it looks like it has, so yeah, go ahead. Install that. <laughs> Sit and wait patiently. Oh, sorry. There we go. This one. Yep. There we go. All right. Now we'll go ahead and run Companion. And there's a couple things we're going to want to set up in Companion here. So, yeah, allow access. That interface, network interface is fine. So we're going to say launch GUI. Now it'll bring up a web browser where we can actually configure Companion. All right, so I'm going to say add by manufacturers. We need to add my ATEM. So that's Blackmagic Design, Blackmagic Design ATEM. Let's choose that. Target IP. I believe it was 195, if I remember right. Let me just, let me just double check that. Oops. ATEM setup. There we go. Yeah, make sure that this really is, yep, 10.18.195, okay, all right, so we can close that. And then model, May... well, they don't have the, uh, they don't have the uh, extreme listed yet, so we're going to have to go with Mini Pro, that's going to be the closest one. And apply changes, okay, all right, so that adds the ATEM, so Companion should be talking to my switcher now. And then we're going to add by search, and we're going to say just macros Lua. Say add that, and then target IP on this. It's this local computer, so 127.0.0.1. Apply changes. All right, and so with that, we should have Companion talking to my ATEM Mini Extreme and to my Stream Deck and to, to just macros. So, all right, so buttons. All right, just to make sure that this is working right, I'm gonna go ahead and configure one of these buttons to be ATEM source one. 
preview me1 cam1 drag and drop that on there and then we'll do cam2 cam3 cam4 let me change my way out so you can, you guys can actually see what's going on with with the device here so as I as I added those buttons they did show up here on on my stream deck now what we're going to do here is we're going to set up this upper left button uh, actually let me do let me do a, a cut button here so uh, they have a preset for that I don't remember uh, I don't see one okay so I'll just set button type regular button and then we're going to search for ATAM cut operation and change the text on that to cut. All right, so now I have a button here labeled cut. Yep, and that, that is cutting between different camera sources. All right, and I'm also going to add, just for fun, I'm going to add a super source button here as well. Regular button. Actually, no, I'm not going to be able to do that because the, the ATAM Mini that the template I'm using for for this doesn't have super source, so I won't be able to do a super source button on here. All right, all right. So anyway, well, I mean, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up the top left button to be the ATAM, so the SS layout cycle. Um, so I'm going to do a regular button, and then we're going to say SS layout. I'll have that be the label on the button, and then for the action, just macros execute script and then I'm gonna go over to adjust macro software there it is make sure I get the layout the name of that script SS layout cycle is what it's called so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and highlight and copy that so then I'm gonna go back over to companion and the script that we want to run is SS layout cycle and that should be enough. So let me, let me cut away. There we go. Yeah. So as I'm pressing the button here on the stream deck, it's calling over to Just Macros to tell it to run that SS layout cycle uh, script. All right. So then I'm going to set up this next button to apply a layout. So this is going to be apply layout. Oops. I can type, I promise. And again, we're going to do just macros, execute script, execute function. No, sorry, execute script is what we want. And the name of the script is SS, uh, apply SS layout. I just remembered that off the top of my head. All right, so if, if that's working right, if I press that button, yeah, there we go. It does the transition. So cycle through the layouts and then apply the layouts. So there we go. That, there is the stream deck talking to companion which is then talking to just macros in order to apply the layouts uh, now things get a little bit more tricky with the the layout preset buttons that I configured because there's no shifts button on here uh, what you have to do is decide ahead of time which of the layouts that you want on the different buttons and this is a little bit more involved so and I'm, I'm gonna have to consult some documentation on this because I don't remember exactly off the top of my head how how this works. So um, bear with me one moment. Again, the documentation on how to do this. Where did I put that? I know it's on OneDrive. Uh, apps. That there it is. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is basically the download that you're going to get from my website. Inside this instructions.txt file, or instructions.pdf file, are the instructions on how to do this. So we're going to uh, do a button to apply a layout one, and then another button to apply a layout two, and so forth. So, okay, all right. So here we go. So the following two buttons. Be sure to change the preset number. So th this. These are the buttons that we, are the, these are the commands that we're going to run in order to call specific layouts. So we're going to do just, ma just, macros, just macros execute function, enviro write, and then set preset number, and then a number. So back over to 
Oh, companion's just over here on this previous tab. All right, so we're going to take this button here, set button type, regular button, just macros, execute function, and function name is, again, let me get this right, enviro right, and the v i r o w r i t e parameters one so we want to execute layout one and we're going to add another step here just macros execute script if i remember right yeah ss layout set so the, the script that we want here is ss layout set and let's see is that all i need to do I'm trying to remember should be it okay all right so with that said I'm going to go ahead and uh, I need to give that layout one give that a name all right and then change the font size it's so it's readable okay all right I'm gonna copy that button so we'll go copy from here to here and then on this one we're gonna change the text to layout two. change the parameter to two and in theory, it may not be applying the layout. So I need to add another, yeah, let's go back to button one. Just macros, execute script, and then the script name is apply ss layout. Okay, so. Hmm, doesn't seem to be working. I I may not have everything configured just just perfectly. I know it does work. I did test it at one point in time, um, and it can it can be done. But like I say, I was unprepared for this, um, so there might be other changes that I need to make. I, I can keep working on this after I end the video today, and make sure that it works for the version of the download that I that I make available later tonight. So, but but yes, you can take use the Stream Deck to trigger. Uh, these scripts and, and make these animations happen. It's just extra work, and it's a little bit, a uh, little bit kludgy. If I'm being a little bit being honest, uh, you're having to run, have one scripting uh, engine call another scripting engine in order to make it go. But you can make it work. So you don't have to have the execute controller. And you can, I mean, you can, you can actually call, call these things manually from just macros as, as well. I don't recommend it, but but you certainly can do that. So uh, ss preset one here. This is a script that I've got uh, that automatically goes to layout one and I can click on the execute button and, and, it, and it runs it and I did it without having to use the Xkeys controller or the stream deck or companion any of that so I mean you can do it uh, and I th believe there's ways to do uh, interfacing to interface with MIDI controllers as well so if you've got a MIDI controller you can you can use just macros with that and you're on your own for figuring that out I haven't I haven't gone looked into that at all myself um, but but yes, it is possible. There's a lot of things you can do with Just Macros. It does talk to a lot of different hardware. It does not support the Stream Deck. The Stream Deck didn't exist when Just Macros was created. So that's, that's come along um, since Just Macros was released. So, but anyway, so yes, it can be done. Uh, not pretty, but it can be done. So if you've already got the Stream Deck, you've already got Companion working, you can add Just Macros and my scripts on top of that in order to give you, give you this ability to do these nifty layout transitions uh, that you're seeing there on your lower left. So, oh, I, haven't, I haven't programmed those. Um, so, anyway, uh, let's see, you guys have any other questions? Let me go back to that desktop with the... <laughs> Can you go over the Windows hotkeys you're using for live streaming production? Um, well, that's, <laughs> there's a lot that I'm doing in Windows, but none of it actually has to do with the production itself. That's just me configuring things. So, yes. Okay, Stream Deck to Just Macros to HM. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I should mention that one of the nice things about Just Macros is it goes through Blackmagic's official SDK. Uh, Companion does not. Companion uses <clears throat> an open source library to communicate directly with the switcher which has caused some problems. 
Um, so if you're looking for something that's going to be reliable and it's going to work with equipment moving into the future, even though Just Macros is way older, it has proven to be more compatible with new equipment coming out. Like, I mean, A10 Mini line didn't exist at all when Just Macros was last updated, but it works just fine with them. Um, so it's because Just Macros it uses Blackmagic, Blackmagic's official SDK. So it doesn't matter what version of the ATEM software you're running, it just works, which is not necessarily true of Just Macros. Or sorry, of, of, of Companion, so yeah. Uh, Pedro, is Just Macros Windows only? Yes, it is Windows only. There's no version for Mac or for Linux. Uh, I have not tested it under some of the emulations like Darwin or Crossover or... I mean, it would definitely work under Parallels, I mean, because you're running Windows there, but... Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's, I don't know how to say any P. Bell uh, has mentioned that it's just macros is not being maintained. That is true. That said, I haven't encountered any situation where it doesn't work. I mean, here I'm using on the last update for just macros. I think it was 2018. So three years later, and it works just fine with the Mini Extreme, which just shipped. So, yeah. Uh, Norm, the first person to make a browser-based SaaS service to generate ATEM animation macros is going to clean up. <clears throat> the problem with a lot of these solutions, like A to Z Productions, for example, has created some uh, animation scripts as well. The problem with those, they're pre-canned. So you can only animate between the different combinations of layouts that, that you program into. So if you do a button to go from 1 to 2, and then a button to go from 2 to 3, you have to have a button to go from 1 to 3, otherwise you can't make that transition without going 1 to 2 and then 2 to 3. The, the software I've got here, it uses mathematics and logic in order to figure out, do the calculations that it takes to do a transition from whatever you've currently got on screen, even if that's a manual super source layout that you've created in the ATAM software, to transition to um, the stored layout that, that you've got in, in the script. So there's, there's intelligence there that you're just not going to be able to get with some of the other uh, solutions that are out there. So, again, you're not going to get that uh, with the A to Z productions things, and you're not going to find it with Companion uh, or any of the other solutions that are out there. There's, there's a lot more going on there. There's, it's a two-way communication thing going on. It's not just blindly shove these instructions over to the ATEM switcher. It's what is the current state of the ATEM switcher, and then what do I need to do to transition from that state to the layout that I want to display on screen. And you just can't get that with a simple, simple macro, a simple list of steps. And so that's the big difference between these. And unfortunately, right now, the only solutions that I'm aware of that allow you to do that would be just macros, or using Ian Morris's uh, PowerShell code. That's it, uh, unless you want to write your own. So I mean, I've considered doing that, and if I had all the time in the world, I would certainly be producing a piece of software designed specifically to, com to control uh, video production equipment with, uh, from any number of devices, whether it be XKeys or Stream Deck or a MIDI controller or whatever. For, unfortunately, I just don't have the t all that time in the world in order to make that happen. I I've toyed with it a little bit, and Again, if I, had all the time, if I had an infinite amount of time, I would already have something uh, done there. Because, I mean, Just Macros does kind of drive me crazy a little bit. I mean, it's, it's got some quirks. It's not perfect. It has some quirks. And I have seen it crash on me before. Uh, but that said, it has still been the best solution I've found and the best solution I've tried. And I've tried a bunch. But it's the best solution that I've found uh, in order to make my workflow work with the ability to do these cool animations between different layouts um, and be able to do it fully dynamically, you know, like, you know, if on the fly I need to adjust a layout, I can do that. Um, or tweak it in the ATEM software and not break scripts, you know, because I'm, because the numbers that's expecting to be uh, used um, are not what they're, not, not what they're, so, um, so, Dan saying you can't do that with the advanced panels then. No, you can't. And the advanced panels doesn't, don't have those capabilities. And that's one of the main reasons that I have stuck with the X keys controllers all this time. Uh, when, you know, these advan the advanced control panels, those are, they're, they're very cool products and they're super high quality and they're really, really well made. And that's the standard interface that most technical directors actually prefer. But I actually like to have the additional functionality that you get with something like this much more. I, I would prefer that over uh, an expensive interface that limits what I'm able to do. I mean, you could certainly use them in conjunction with one another. You could have an ATEM advanced panel 
along with just macros and an X-Keys controller. You could, you, you could use them together. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's pros and cons to each. You know, you've got to decide what's going to work best for your particular workflow for the customers that you're going to be working with. And for me, I've found that the best thing is just macros with X-Keys controllers because it allows me to do whatever I want. Uh, with with the device, you know, I'm not limited to whatever commands happen to be available in another tool like Companion. You know, Companion is missing a lot of stuff. You know, there there is no way to say transition uh, turn turn on upstream key one uh, and then fade it in. You can't do it. It's just not that's a command that's not there. And so you're limited by the tool that you select. You know, whatever limitations the t your tool has, you've got to live with it. And I found that. Just macros, even though it's not perfect, it has some quirks, it has some weird, some weird things that it does. I found it to be the the best tool for me. So, all right. Um, let's see. So, did you add the ATEM Extreme to your kit? And if so, how do you see it fitting in, given all your SDI connecting infrastructure? Honestly, um, I mostly well. I'm, I'll show you it as I'm talking about it. I mostly got it for the for the YouTube channel. Um, I don't actually really plan to use it for most situations. The one situation I can think of where it might come in handy is if I get hired by a client that says we need to have six people on screen at a time, and then I'll take the mini A10 Mini Extreme, add that to what my 2ME production studio is capable of doing. Uh, so I'll use the Mini Extreme to do two, three, whatever of the Super Source windows pass that over to my 2ME switcher and then add, add the additional windows on there. Um, so more of an extension for extreme circumstances than something that I'm going to use in my regular production. You know, I bought the original A10 Mini when it came out over a year ago and I have never used it for production, not once, because uh, I have other switchers that are more capable and uh, are better fit for the way that I happen to work. You know, the main limitation for me is the, is the HDMI. I deal with problems with HDMI constantly. If you guys watch the monitors in my trailer flickering, that's HDMI. Those are HDMI problems. If I had SDI monitors, none of that would be happening. It would be perfect. It would be flawless. HDMI is just not as reliable as that I would like my equipment to be. Um, especially if you start to do with long cable runs. You know, like most of the time when we're working in an event, we've got at least, at least one camera that's 50 feet away or more. And HDMI, you got you've got to get into very expensive optical cables at that distance to have reliability. And so it's just easier to use SDI. It's what it's designed for. Um, so the A10 Minis just don't fit into my workflow super super well. I, I totally appreciate what Blackmagic has done here, and I realize that this opens up a new world to a whole lot of people. You know, people are able to do things that they've never been able to do before, and it opens up a class of equipment that has not traditionally worked very well in, in professional video. You know, camcorders and things like GoPros and whatnot. You plug those directly into this. I, I absolutely appreciate that. But at the same time, when you get into the bigger productions like the ones that I do, it just doesn't fit. It doesn't, I mean, yeah, it's not designed for that. And, you know, if they had an SDI version, maybe. But... Yeah, it doesn't 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 fit into my workflow, and so, yeah. So I, I bought it, really just for the channel, for the, for the YouTube channel here. So, very I'm making a very expensive video here. It's kind of the bottom line. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Um, use more than one A10 Mini Extreme together. Uh, I mean, you can certainly daisy. The problem, one of the big problems with. Uh, Daisy chaining from one to the next, each time you add an additional link in the chain, especially switchers, you're adding additional delay. Uh, and I don't know if you guys have paid attention, but the video of me coming from the switcher. So let's see, go back to, the, to that layout. So the output of the switcher, you notice that the video of me, it's significantly delayed from the live view there on the right. Uh, because it's, it's having to go through yet additional layers of complexity. And so daisy chaining one switcher into another, that, that problem just gets worse and worse and worse. So, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, bit off track. Can ATM Mini Extreme do tally and talkback? I have the Television Studio 4K Pro, but thinking about changing the Mini Extreme ISO just because of the ISO recording. Uh, so it can do tally 
with supported black magic switchers. Um, let's see if I, yeah, I do. So one, one thing you can do with the, eight, the Mini Extreme, uh, if you add these bi-directional SDI HDMI converters, you can control the cameras that have SDI. So that would be uh, like the, uh, let's see, they haven't got, uh, <laughs> can't remember the name off the top of my head. Um, the Ursus, yeah, the Ursa Minis, the Ursa Mini Series, you'd be able to control those and get, get Tally from the A10 Mini Extreme. So you have your HDMI uh, coming from the switcher going into this device and then your SDI connection is going to the camera. Uh, or like a, the one camera I'm using up here above, that's a uh, Micro Studio uh, Camera 4K. Uh, you'd be able to get Tally with those. So if you want to do Tally with cameras other than the Pocket Cinema cameras, you would use one of these devices to convert the signals to and from SDI in order to make that happen. So. Okay, how much storage space it has or is it off machine? I'm not sure what storage space you're referring to, so. Have you seen John's Supersource Macro program? I have not looked at it yet. I saw that he released a video about it this morning. I, have, I had other things going on. I haven't had a chance to look at it. Uh, I did see an early version of it where it was basically creating um, the XML code to go into ATEM configuration files to produce Supersource layouts. So, so yeah, I mean, you, can, you could certainly use that to get, get those numbers to plug into my scripts. That would, that would work. And that's, I mean, the num those number values are universal. They're not specific to just macros or ATEM um, software control. So, anyway, all right. Jonathan, thoughts on HDMI over Ethernet for long runs? Uh, it, it can absolutely work. Um, one of the downsides to that is by the time you get something that actually works really well, you might actually be cheaper going to SDI. So, and you have more compatibility. And one of the big problems with the, excuse me, the HDMI, to, it's actually key, it's actually Cat5. It's not Ethernet. It's, it's the same cable, but it's not an Ethernet protocol. So, but one of the downsides to that is there's no universal standard, or there is a standard, but these devices don't use it. There's an HD base T that that, you, that goes over Cat5, but that's not what these what these things are using. They use their own proprietary thing. So, whatever device you use, you always have to use its companion device. You can't mix and match. And so, if you have one die, you can't just go out and buy one from another manufacturer and have it work. Uh, that they are kind of non-standard. Non so, all right. Um, ISO recording. Okay, yeah. All right. So, the ISO recording. Uh, I didn't get the ISO version of this switcher. Uh, I don't need it. All my cameras that I use have local recording, and it's better quality anyway than what you get with the ISO. Um, but it's limited to whatever storage you, you happen to plug into the device. So, you know, if you put a real small SSD on there, that's what you're going to be limited to. So, I mean, all the, rec the recording is not internal. It's done to external SSDs through the USB ports that are on the back. So, if you need more, if you need to record for longer, you just buy a bigger SSD. Um, and I believe it will actually cascade from one to another. So we plug in multiple, either direct or through a USB hub. I believe it will automatically cascade from one drive to another when the first one fills up. Don't quote me on that, but I think I remember hearing them say that. So, so. I hope they do an update to TV Studio with 8 SDI. I would love that too. You know, I, you know, I have a television studio. That's kind of my go-to switcher for smaller events uh, when I'm not using the trailer. And I never use the HDMIs on that. I don't, I'm not sure that I've ever used the HDMIs on that. I've always ever done... Because, I mean, if I, if I need more than four SDI sources, I, I just bring the trailer and use my big switcher for that. But, uh, yeah, I would love to see something that's Television Studio-like with the capabilities of the A10 Minis that's all SDI. That would be a great product and certainly one that I would buy. HDMI to HD SDI converter for a longer run will not carry the CCU for Blackmagic cameras. Putting these scripts later today, and so use the download link that I that I there we go have up on screen. So super, uh, dgp.li slash supersource4 to download the code to make this work. And uh, again, that'll be up later today. So anyway, that's going to be it for now. So thanks everyone for watching, and have a great day.